If you're looking for something, and I mean just about anything, you can probably pick it out at Pickers. We kind of cover it all. From boats to books, from sewing machines to shoes, from tools to trucks. Do you know how many items you have in here? Oh, easily. Two million items, easily. And believe it or not, Pickers is divided up into departments with items organized by category, like books and record albums. Everything's alphabeticalized because I'm that way. <laughs> it all started with Ron Diamond going to auctions in New York State. And I'd be looking for a truck or a piece of equipment. Well, I get what I needed and I see something else and had a little extra money, so I buy that too. And then he'd sell it. It was always kind of like a second endeavor. When he and his wife Angie sold their farm in New York and moved to Oriental, they rented this building called the Old Tater Barn to store their belongings. They used to grow sweet potatoes in the fields all around us, and this was the barn where they would bag them up and then send them on out. They rented an adjacent building too, but after Hurricane Irene destroyed their house and Ron lost his leg in a truck accident, the diamonds fell on some hard times. We opened the doors and uh, started selling our belongings. Then someone asked the diamonds if they'd be interested in buying things. It started with the family of a man who passed away that wanted to sell his belongings. So we'd buy the lawn equipment, the furniture, the artwork, the boat, the lawn tractor, the car, the truck, everything and then, of course, put it up for sale. The Diamonds bought the two buildings they were renting, and that's how Pickers came to be. As we see things unused in people's homes or yards, we would acquire them and maybe repurpose them, but definitely find a way to sell it and make a profit. I like to bring in odd stuff. When I see something odd, I'll buy it. Almost I don't care what it costs, I'll buy it. Because if it sits here long enough, someone else will buy it and I will make some money on it. I pride myself at being very diverse. <laughs> the more I can get of the unusual, the better. And there's a brass elephant made from parts of old musical instruments. That's the only one in the world. There are these terracotta warriors discovered in a quarry in China in 1978. Angie says they'd be great for a front porch. Here in Oriental, we like to decorate with Oriental. There are these hand-carved mahogany stools from the Congo. Most of them go to people who want to put them in their garden, outside, because they're solid mahogany. They won't rot. The curious look of this place from the outside is what draws many passers-by inside. And then when they walk in, they're like totally amazed, blown away about how deep the building is and how much stuff we have in here. <laughs> Some people come in just to browse, uh -huh. <laughs> Others are on a mission. Do you have an eight inch cleat? Yeah, over there on the marine table. What do you think? It's awesome. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff here. John Awanaki is looking for nautical items to decorate his home. This is the kind of place I'd like to come to multiple times because you can't see it all. You can stand in one spot and just look around and you can stay there for an hour and your eyes get something new every time they move around. A new look at something old or something odd. There's something here for everyone.